What is up everyone? Welcome to Massive Unboxing number 15, the Airliners International 2023 edition. So I'm finally back home after an exciting trip to Dallas, Texas. I picked up a whole bunch of, of good stuff here. A lot of airplane models, but also a bunch of memorabilia. So why do I have this out on the floor? Well, I don't have a table that's big enough to host all of this. So that's why you see it on the floor. But I'll point out a lot of the cool stuff that we have here. So there's some airplane models. Big shout out to Red River Aviation for getting me two of these models and also AS Aviation for another one of those models as well. And another shout out goes to Aviation LAS for these cool drawings that he that he uh, did previously and was giving them out for free at the convention. So thank you, buddy, for that. I truly appreciate it. Another shout out goes to ROC Aviation or Gavin from Instagram, who helped me find this North Central timetable from 1957, right around the time that they started service to Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So thank you to all those people for um, getting me these cool items, selling them to me, or even just helping me find them. Whatever the case may be, I want to give a huge thanks to those guys. And huge thanks to everyone else for a great time at that convention as well. I know that it's since long past, but so many memories we made there at the convention. I really hope that all of you guys will turn out to the next convention in Kansas City, June 26th to the 29th. I'll have another video coming up on that here in the next week or so, so stay tuned for that. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this cleared out, and I'll kind of go over it, all of the, some of the memorabilia stuff as well, and then we'll unbox all the models. we got some cool stuff in there, and, yet, and yes, you can see there is another one of 200 model in here, one that I've been looking forward to getting. I'll talk more about that when we get to it, but for now, let's go ahead and check out everything else. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get this show on the road here. We've got a ton of memorabilia to look at, so we're just going to do a little bit of a rapid fire round here. First bit that we have here is a JetBlue, I'd say this is like an advertisement of some kind, follow me to Long Beach. Goodbye LAX, but I think they have now done a 180 on that here very recently. Here are those uh, drawings from Aviation LAS that I was talking about and some stuff that's actually fallen out. Uh, so I'll try to get them into frame here best I can. So here's a British Airways A380. That is a fantastic drawing. A Southwest 737-700 in the Canyon Blue livery and an American 777-200 in the Chrome livery. So beautiful drawings here by Aviation LAS. I think he's got more on his Instagram page. I will link that in the description below if any one of you guys are interested to take a look at more of his creations. Got a PSA baggage identification sticker. There's like 20 of these that I got, but I'm not gonna show them all. And then a, a PSA Super 80 baggage tag. I love that. And then this is a bit of a really interesting bit of mem memorabilia here, but we have a Northwest 757 checklist from 2000. June 6th is the date, as you can see up there. So may have to scan this and I'll put this up online if anyone wants to see it. Here's another little keychain with jet tip on it and also Airliners International 2023 Dallas on the other side. So just like last year, but obviously with a different year and city. We got an ATA baggage tag right here, a beautiful little tag right here, a little bit different than the PSA one. And then we have some safety cards. So this is a uh, collector box thing that I got from one of the tables that was there. Uh, it's these people right here, the interaction group. And there's a little QR code you can scan if you wish. So pause the video, scan it with your phone or whatever, whatever other device you have in your house to get to that website. And then we have um, a little thing right here. That's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, so they have like annual subscription and all that cool stuff and you know, whatever else. Not, not sponsored by these people. So I should put that out there. And then we have some safety cards right here. So we have a Delta 757-300 safety card from 2011. I got three of these things, so that was really awesome. And then we have some other free safety cards that I got as well. So let me grab the other ones here. There's a whole bunch of safety cards here, so I gotta sort through all this, but uh, two more of those, put that off to the side. There's a Miami Air International 738 safety card, which is awesome. And then we have an Allegiant a320, a uh, early 2021 revision, which looks awesome. And then here's a uh, second one here, just for good measure. Plenty of duplicates, but they were giving these out for free, so you know, what can I do? Then we have an A319 as well, an A319 safety card. And we have some Breeze memorabilia here too. This one from an Embraer 195. I'm not sure if this has ever been shown before. Um, only maybe on those who have uh, flown on Breeze in the past. And then there's a second one there as well. You can also see me there in the back. Hello me. You'll probably see me in front of the camera at some point on one of my videos, but if you've watched some of the other content, you've probably seen me already. We got a Sun Country 737-700 safety card, a 2020 revision. Looks awesome. I love the little topography right there. 
And then we have some small stickers, which is actually being given out by just some uh, other attendees. So I picked up a couple. I got a Capital Airlines one and a uh, BOAC uh, one with the Comet Jetliner there on the front. So that was awesome. And then some free timetables. This is a Northwest Orient one for DC-10s. Uh, June 9th, 1978 is the date on that one. And we got some of the other ones. This is another free one, actually. U.S. Air from May 1st of 1986. New service Atlanta, Jacksonville. And here are some of the ones I bought. So this is stuff that interests me more. North Central timetable from June 7th of 1974. I just bought this one because I kind of wanted a North Central timetable with that design on it. Then we have August 1st of 1965. I got it since it had the uh, BAC 111 on it there in the old El Dorado livery. And then we have one uh, North Central timetable from August of 67, the first that introduced the North Central DC-9 jets. So I had to pick that one up. I like this one here because I'm a bit of a racing guy myself. This has the Indy 500 there. Six new nonstop fan jets between Indy and New York LaGuardia. Fly a winner. This is effective January 15th, 1970, and it is from Allegheny. And then we have a uh, Braniff one right here, of course, you know, being in Dallas. How could I not walk out of there with some Braniff memorabilia? So here is um, Braniff International from early 1972, introducing the 727 Braniff place. And then this was also in here for some reason. Not sure what this is all about, but this is like handwritten. So I can only assume this was done by uh, the previous owner of this timetable. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then we have a Delta One menu for, um, this is actually pretty recent. I think this is from June of 2023, a breakfast card. This is the, um, I would think that's like the Italian side and here is the English side. So you can see here, uh, breakfast card. So this would be used on the route from Boston or Detroit to Rome. So that's pretty cool. And then we have some more timetables again. We have, this is one of the ones I bought, a Republic timetable from October 26, 1980. This was made right after they acquired Hughes Air West and expanded out on the West Coast. That didn't last long as they suffered financially. Then we have a Hawaiian Airlines flight schedule from 1998. It's a, a two-sided one. And then continuing on here, a pair of Southwest flight schedules from September 12th, 1999. Uh, flight schedules in air quotes because uh, they don't have them in here. It's just like somebody uh, ripped it out and left only the front and back covers on here, but there's a cool route map on it. So I guess we'll just have to work with that. And here's the timetable that Gavin helped me find, a North Central timetable, June 1st, 1957. Cost me about $20, but I'd say it's worth every cent because I've been looking for one of those. And I think this is the last timetable that Braniff ever produced, April 25th, 1982, because they went belly up on, uh, I think it was May 12th of the same year. And then we have a Delta timetable from April 1st, 1987, the first made after their uh, acquisition of Western Airlines. Then we have another Western timetable. This is from August 1st, 1982. Now this is actually not mine. I got this off of uh, Gemini Jets 1975 because in one of the booty bags that I got because my parents came with me, so we had three in total since they also registered for the convention. Uh, one of them had a Braniff timetable from January of 1982. So I asked Mark uh, if he was interested in it and he said, yeah, and he had a Western timetable in there. So I was like, yeah, I'll take that. And we traded, rest is history. And last timetable in here, America West Airlines from September the 5th of 2001. So um, that was one of the timetables I was given. That was kind of interesting, I thought. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and continue on here. And before I do continue, I do have a new pointer, at least for this unboxing video. Uh, this is a pen from the Texan Airplane Store. I've heard a lot of great reviews about them, especially from like Red River Aviation and many other collectors that I've talked to who have bought from his online store in the past, offers great prices on on his uh, stock and all that good stuff and he was very much present at the convention with a handful of tables a lot of good stock i did buy from him each day of the convention because the first five people uh, that did show up to his table on each day of the convention got a 15 percent off discount that is an incredible discount and i could not pass up an opportunity to take advantage of that each day of the convention so that's what i had to do so we'll go ahead and get started here with some jet bridges. One of the items that I did buy from the Texan Airplane store, uh, the store owner named Nick, a really great guy, and I do recommend buying from his store. I've not bought from his online store before, but I may have to do that here in the future. So of course, the jet bridges, I think you've seen a lot of these unboxings. You kind of know the uh, deal with these things. You get a little um, sticker there with airlines and stuff, and then there is all the jet bridges. So figured I'd get another set of these because I might start doing the bigger and better airports. So we're gonna move on here now to some GSE vehicles. Needed another set of these. I finally got around to getting another set. 
So of course, jet bridges and GSC, they go hand in hand, so I had to do that. So of course, you see all the GSC in there. You can pause to look at each one of them individually if you wish. But we're gonna go ahead and move on to the main deal of this video, and that is the airplane model. So let's get started, everyone. So the first three models that we have here, these are the models that I bought off of some other folks who were showing up at the convention. The first two I bought from Red River Aviation. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this one right here with this Gemini Jets 1 to 400 scale Northwest Airlines Boeing 727-200 in the bowling shoe livery. This will be a great asset for retro FSD and I'm looking forward to having this in my collection. This will go well with the United 727 and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and take, it, take a look in here. Item number on this is GJNWA501 and a 2004 release under the Gemini Jets 2 brand. Um, I, I, now, I will say, though, I did take out some of these models while I was at the hotel, um, and some of the models, um, I didn't see any uh, significant damage on all of them, and hopefully they did make the uh, trip back home safely, but at least this one did. Now, when I did take this out, the um, rear exhaust piece here for the tail just kind of fell out. Now, I'm not sure if that was like that initially, but... Um, but right there you can see it just kind of snaps on, so I'll have to glue that in at some point. But nevertheless, this model arrived in fantastic condition outside of that little defect there. But we'll get that glued on in the future and that will look good as new. And here she is, the Northwest 727-200 by Gemini Jets. Starting off at the front, we got the cockpit windows, you have the L1 door and a fleet number down there on the nose gear doors. That would be 29 or 0, I believe, since that's a registration. We have the Northwest titles and then leading back over to the overwing exits. And then you have the registration, November 29 or 0, Uniform Sierra. The beautiful Northwest tail there with the uh, arrow pointing up to the Northwest. It can also be viewed as an N there with that arrow or also a W. Um, so it can be viewed in two separate ways, which I find that fascinating. Kind of reminds me of the uh, Weather Nation logo. They kind of have a similar principle in uh, that logo. The flip under here, we do have the beautiful Gemini Jets logo and the stand hole along with the silver paint. Uh, no polish on this one, unfortunately. Uh, landing gear and everything, they don't roll on this since this is a model from, you know, almost 20 years ago. God, I'm getting old. Um, but we do have the overwing exits printed on, which looks awesome. And no other exterior details really outside of that, but we do have some printed stuff right over there. So fantastic model right here. A little bit sad about that defect, but I think some super glue will easily fix it up and it will be good as new. So let's continue. Up next we have an American MD-82. Don't you already have one? Well, I'll explain here in just a second. So let's go ahead and take this model out of the box and I'll explain everything. Because this is actually a Gemini Jets 1 to 400 scale Delta Airlines McDonnell Douglas MD-88 in the widget livery. Another model, this has uh, gotten off of Red River Aviation as I've said previously. Um, he got this in a massive unboxing where he bought a lot of models. Um, and by a lot of models, like a group of models that he bought off of eBay. It's actually in one of his previous massive unboxings, which I'll link in the description below. Um, and those models did not come with their own boxes, so uh, he had to use one of his spare boxes that he had lying around to get this sent over to me, which was kind of interesting. But nevertheless, what can you do when you don't have a box to use? You just use your own. And this model right here is just delightful, yes. Need to get that MD-90 back somehow because I lost that model a long time ago, so getting that would be a dream come true. Also forgot to mention that the landing gear is included in there as well for what would originally be the uh, Dragon Wings uh, American MD-82 with the black nose. So I kind of want to get one of those models, so hopefully I do come across that in the future for a pretty good price. So that's the closest thing I have to it right now, but I love the Delta MD-88 a little bit more here in this case, so we'll see how that goes. And here she is, the Gemini Jets Delta MD-88 in the widget livery. Starting off at the front, we have the black nose, which leads up to that anti-glare in our cockpit windows. Have some nice little details up here at the front, so we'll go ahead and take a look at that. See the wheels there, a little bit off, but again, this is a used model, so what can you do? Um, and then we have the blue cheat line here. You can see the difference with that black nose up into the cheat line, which is supposed to be a very deep blue, like a navyish color. I know Aero Classics got this wrong where they made the, I think it was the nose that the same color as the cheat line. Got the Delta widget right there, small Delta titles, the bigger Delta titles and the American flag, leading back up to our overwing exits and the registration, November 9 or 5, 6, Delta Lima. And then we have the beautiful tail here along with the Delta logo on the engines there. Beautiful Pratt & Whitney engines. Awesome, awesome job here by Gemini Jets in this model, released in very late 2019 and early 2020. 
And we'll flip underneath. We do have the polish on this one, which is awesome. This very tiny Gemini Jets logo in the stand hole and all your other applicable details and the overwing exits can be found up here along with the beacon. No antennas on this model, but I know they have added those later on on some uh, newer releases like the New York Air MD-80, which I did not find at the convention, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully I will find that in the future because I'd love to add to my Mad Dog collection. So very nice model. Next up, we have the JC Wings 1 to 400 scale Prime Air Boeing 737-800 freighter. This is a model I got off of AS Aviation for a pretty good deal there. You see there, $45, which I think is very reasonable for a model of this nature. Um, now, this is a bit of an interesting box here. You can see he's bought off of Wings World, or at least that's kind of where it came from. I don't think he bought it off of that. It was probably from like Waffle Collectibles because um, some other models I bought from him have had that. Um, sticker on the side, so that's what I've noticed. There's the bottom there, you can see the item number and another little sticker there. Now, the interesting thing is that this is an orange box, so I can only assume that this is not a licensed model, so they just put this on here and just put the little decal there on the front. And this model kind of opens up like one of those Apple boxes where you just kind of have it slide up like so. It's not as satisfying as Apple. They got the plastic cradle in here, and we'll take off this orange piece and then get that plastic cradle out. Now there is a cool card in here, so I'll remove that so we can take a look at that. Um, so you see some specifications on the back and then just an image of the uh, airplane up there at the front. Very nice details there by JC Wings, or I guess EW Wings because of the EW and the item numbers, but it, it's JC Wings basically, so they just use that to avoid the licensing issues and whatnot. There goes the top half of the plastic cradle. Take out the model and it's very, very nice. Would have gotten the NG, but I'll take this JC Wings any day. And here she is, the Prime Air 737-800 Freighter by JC Wings. Now the colors on this is pretty good here. I love the effort that they put onto this. Um, there's a little bit of wing flex, but what can you do with this mold? This is not necessarily the greatest out there. So what are you supposed to do really? And I think I know the NG version is pretty rare in the first place. So I'll check on that tail here in just a moment. And yeah, this is not going to work out too well because the camera will like to focus on the wing there, the winglet on the back. So we'll go ahead and try to do, do this review here without it doing that. Starting off at the front, we got the cockpit windows and then there's some small little details just up there. So we'll go ahead and zoom in on that. Uh, I think that says it's like operated by, was it like Sun Country Airlines or something like that? Because I know there's some 737 freighters that are operated for them, but I think there are some that are for like other carriers. I can't necessarily see what that says. So if anybody knows what that says, uh, let me know in the dis in the uh, comments below. Now the L1 door right there, and then you have your cargo loading door with the big Prime Air titles, which look very crisp, very solid. And then we do have the winglets right here, which I'll let the camera focus on as it desires. Of course, the one time that I do, there we go. And this is gonna focus on the winglets. See, there you see, same elements of the livery on that side over there. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at the tail here, which just has a little Amazon smile, arrow logo, and all that good stuff. I know some uh, 737s, they do have like plastic stabilizers and I think, yeah, this um, this thing is like bending a little bit. So yeah, this is definitely plastic, but I have heard that the reason why it is plastic, at least on some 737s, is that so that the models don't tip on their tails, kind of like kind of like that in a way. So, because if, if it was die cast like the rest of the model, it would tip over. So it does make sense that they do use lighter materials, which may be cheaper at the end of the day, but as long as the model sits up perfectly in the way it's supposed to, you know, what can you really do? Can't really sit here and complain about that too much. But this is a very nice model coming over from AS Aviation. So make sure to go check him out because he's got some great aviation content. Lots, lots of reports on like latest news and all that cool stuff. Great guy to talk with as well. So be sure to go check out his channel when you have a chance. All right, let's go ahead and check out some Aero Classics that we have from the Airliners International 2023 convention. So predominantly I bought uh, Gemini Jets, but I did get a few Aero Classics in there as well. I got three in total here that I will be unboxing. First up we have, this is a model that I've been excited to get. Not necessarily eyeing for, but I found it for a really good deal. Somebody actually pointed this out to me, and so I ran over to that table and I bought it up for about $45. So this is the Aero Classics 1 to 400 scale North Central Airlines Douglas DC 930 with the polished livery. I'm not 100% sure if this livery ever existed, um, but I have seen a couple photos of like polished North Central uh, DC-9s or even Republic DC-9s because I think this livery would have existed right around the time of the uh, Republic um, era when that began because North Central and Southern merged in 1979 to form Republic Airlines, which was the first airline merger in the post-deregulation era. 
So this is your standard Aero Classics Douglas DC-9 box. If you've seen this before, you'll know what this is about. That sticker came from the vendor that I bought it from. I don't remember his name, unfortunately, um, but he seemed like a really great guy and had a lot of cool stuff in there as well. Let's go ahead and take this out. I'm very much excited about this. It'll add to my North Central collection wonderfully because that is what I've been wanting to do. This cradle here is not one that come out all the way. Got that last corner, there we go. Take her out. Yes, very, very nice. Love North Central there. Love me some Herman the Duck on uh, my planes. Such a nice model that we have here, the North Central DC-930 in the polish livery by Aero Classics. Starting off at the front, we have a black nose. You can kind of see it right over there. We have a little Herman the Duck logo. I never noticed that little detail there. So you see Herman the Duck just underneath the cockpit windows along with a fleet number just ahead of that. Near the beginning of that blue cheat line, which is reminiscent of Republics, you have the small North Central titles up there leading back towards the tail. And you do have Herman the Duck up there. American flag on the engine. And we have the registration November 9061 November. Uh, this aircraft would have continued to fly for Republic and then on to Northwest. Flipping it underneath here, we don't have too many details to look at because Aero Classics is not known to put um, um, uh, antennas on their models and all that fun stuff, but they do put on the beacon on there on the top. Unfortunately, not on the bottom because the stand hole kind of blocks that, but you do have some details printed on for the uh, luggage doors and all that cool stuff. Very nice model here. Try not to get too many fingerprints on this because, again, this is a polished model. Would hate for this to be tarnished later on, so I'll have to uh, clean this off with a microfiber cloth when I get another opportunity. But this is a very solid model coming over from Aero Classics, so let's continue. Up next, we have the Aero Classics 1 to 400 scale United Airlines Boeing 727 100 in the Saul Bass livery. Been looking for one of these for Retro FSD because this type, along with the 200, flew into Sioux Falls during the 80s or so with this livery. This is a blank Aero Classics box. They have like no details on it, but you see up there, uh, they put like the sticker for the registration and livery, which is on this side in this case. Got the AeroClassicsDirect.com website, which I bought from before. Would recommend it if you're looking for some good Aero Classics models. Um, if you're looking for like, the new releases specifically. This was released, I think, just this past month, actually. So I've heard, I've heard some good things about this model. So let's go ahead and take a look here. If I can get this out. Good Lord, this is greasy. And there we go. Wow. Very, very nice. I'm going to take a closer look here. Just to make sure there's anything too weird on it. Which doesn't look like there is. We're doing pretty good. And here she is, the United 727 and 100 Solvass livery by Aero Classics. I do notice that this model sits a little bit nose up, which is kind of interesting. I don't think it's supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be pretty close to level, so something wrong there with this mold, unfortunately. But nevertheless, this is definitely looking like a 721, so I won't, won't sit here and complain too much, but I did want to point that out. Up at the front, we got the cockpit windows and a small little printed detail. Let's zoom in on that. That looks to be a fleet number there, 7010. And then we have the nose gear door and the nose gear, along with the 01 door with the United titles leading back over here. Some other printed details are included. Overwing ex exits in the registration, November 7010 uniform, and the beautiful tulip on the tail, which stayed the same for a good 20 years or so. Wish they kept this logo because this is so nice. Underneath, we do have your standard Aero Classic stuff with the gear and the, and the uh, silver paint. They did not polish this, unfortunately, because I think that's how it's supposed to be on the real thing. Uh, they, but they chose just to put the silver paint on it, so it must be something but like the polishing, electro-polishing, whatever it may be. Got the overwing exit and the beacon there printed on, and nothing else really to comment about underneath. So this will go well for Retro FSD, despite some of the flaws that this might have, which is a bit unfortunate, but nevertheless, we won't sit here and make a big fuss about it too much since we spent money on it. So let's continue. I think some of you guys may love this model up next. I've been wanting one of these types of models for a long time, but could never really find one. Up until now, we have the Aero Classics 1 to 400 scale Ozark Airlines Douglas DC 910. This is in the old 1970s livery, and I'll talk about what's so special about this model here in just a moment. So, very nice, like yellow, orange ish box, and you can see there, I got it for 40 bucks, and this is the sticker there for the information about the aircraft. November 9070 Zulu, which was the first DC 9 actually that Ozark operated, at least based off my knowledge. And uh, yeah, this box is pretty old. I think this was released in about 2000, 2001 or so. So, I will talk about some of the interesting elements that this model has, and of course, 
uh, the reason why this is so special. So let's take this beauty out and grab by the tail here because there's not much space to grab it elsewhere and take a look at this. So what's so special about this model? Well, if you take a look here on the wing seam, you'll see that there is a screw on the belly. So that's what they use to attach the wing seam onto the fuselage before they switch to uh, gluing it like what everyone else does today. That's what makes this model so special and I think these original, uh, they call them Gen 1 Aero Classics, they are very rare and hard to find and they do commend quite a bit of money on eBay depending on what uh, airline you're looking for and what aircraft type you're looking for. Because I think they had uh, BAC 111s and Electras. I think some like DC-6s as well, if I'm not mistaken, and some other types that I can't really think of right now, since I haven't really done too much research on some of like, the really old Aero Classics releases. And here she is, the Ozark DC-910 in the 1970s livery by Aero Classics. Of course, I'm sure you might point out a lot of the uh, elements of this mold are not accurate, but again, you have to keep in mind, this model was made a long time ago, so some of the technology that we have today to make molds more accurate weren't really around back then, so there are some elements that are lacking in many aspects, so what can you do really? But it is a nice piece of history nonetheless because it shows how much this uh, hobby has progressed, how much one 400 scale models have progressed in about 20 or so years. Starting off at the front, we got a black nose. You have like an anti-glare there underneath the cockpit windows. Then the cockpit windows and the nose gear have the L1 door and also little Douglas DC jets right next to the door there. You see McDonnell Douglas DC-9 there, or just Douglas DC-9, not McTunnel. That was not there yet. That didn't come around until later. And we have the small Ozark titles up there with a green line that jets up here into the tail, no pun intended. And we have the registration printed on the engines, November 9 or 7 zero Zulu, and the three swallows right there on the tail, one of them there in that green. And the other side is about the same, but you do have, well, it looks like a little smudge right there, but again, 20 year old model, what can you do? I'll take a closer look there at that screw that I was talking about. You see there, that's how they attach the model or the wing seam there on, which actually is pretty much the whole back half there of the fuselage. So again, technology was much more limited in around 2000, 2001, whenever this model was released compared to 2023. But nevertheless, an interesting piece of history to have and also helpful for retro FSD because I do need an Ozark DC-9 in this livery. And they did fly this type to Sioux Falls as well in their early years before getting the larger Dash 30s. So we're going to go ahead and move on to our Gemini Jets, which will round out our video. Very excited to unbox them all. All right, let's switch it up a little bit. Let's get some modern models in here, and then we'll go back to some of the retro stuff. So right here, we have the Gemini Jets 1 to 400 scale American Airlines Airbus A321 with the flagship Valor Medal of Honor livery. I got this model because I saw this in Dallas not once, not twice, but three times. Once on the Skylink, and then again from my hotel room, and then a third time, which is actually just today for me recording this, as I was leaving DFW. So this model now has quite a bit of sentimental value to me as I saw it three separate times while I was in the area. So there's your standard Gemini Jet stuff, the pamphlet there, obviously a lot of good information on here. A uh, 2022 release as to be expected with this. Item number on this is GJAAL2139. And I've taken a look at this previously, but this model is actually really gorgeous and my goodness, yeah. Now I can see why people love this livery so much. This is really, really nice. And I've been hoping that this would visit Sioux Falls on one of the Midwest Honor flights, but hasn't happened yet, but hopefully it will in the future. And here she is, the American Airbus E321 in the Medal of Honor or Flagship Valor livery by Gemini Jets. Now again, this is another one of the models where the camera is liking to focus on the winglet there in the back, so we're gonna try and avoid that best we can. Starting up at the front, we got the cockpit windows and there's a small little printed detail I just noticed. You can see right there in blue, I think that says flagship Valor. You can see it just underneath the cockpit windows. Got a little A321 title there underneath the, uh, next to the L1 door. One world logo, then the American titles, another A321 sticker uh, next to that L2 door. Then you have the um, various badges there or the, um, um, I forget what you call those, not like badges necessarily, but uh, the different awards, I guess I'll call them for now, of um, what you can get. Uh, the Medal of Honor thing right there, and then pretty cool printed details back here. I love the effort that Gemini put on this. I can't necessarily see what that uh, says. 
Um, but it does say, like, you know, some words down here in that, like, um, goldish text. Name the registration November 167 Alpha November, and then an internal registration code underneath that. Got the antennas up there on the top, and also a Wi Fi dome, which looks pretty good. Then the American Tail, which they did a pretty good job on. Now, for the body color, I think they did okay on this. Maybe a little dark, but, you know, they've had, they've been, they've been very inconsistent on that, so what are you gonna do about that? Then there's also that 899 there, that internal registration code printed underneath the wing. Then you have the engines on there, which some people have reported that they've been falling off, um, but at least mine here, they are glued on perfectly. I bought this from the DG Pilot table, by the way. Again, another great store that, uh, that I bought from. And it was great to check in with Donnie again because he had some cool stories to tell. On the winglets there, you can see it's printed blue and it has, um, I think that says Flagship Valor. Then you see the American logo and then some other details underneath. And then it's on the other side as well. So if I will focus on that, hopefully it will, because, you know, the camera has its own mind right now. There we go. There you can see it. Yep, same details and everything. But a very nice model here by Gemini Jets. And underneath, I don't think there's any other extra details, which there isn't. You can see pretty much the standard American underbelly, nothing special underneath that. But a very nice model coming from Gemini Jets, despite some of the issues that the A321 mold has. I think the IAE is better than the CFM just because you don't have to deal with the oversized engines and whatnot. But Gemini did a really good job on this, and so did NG. So only got the Gemini because I didn't really see the NG anywhere. Up next, we have the Gemini Jets 1 to 400 scale American Airlines Airbus E319 with Sharklets. The new 2022 release that came out in, I think it was October, if I'm not mistaken. I've been looking for one of these, and now I finally got a chance to get it. This will be a great opportunity for Sioux Falls, especially if we get these again. Um, item number on this is GJAAL2084. You see that American register trademark thing, so this is a licensed model, but... You know, me personally, I don't really care about the licensing too much. I just care if the model looks good or not. And here we are. I'll check the QC again, because I felt like something was loose when I moved it, but I don't know. Maybe it's just maybe it's just my nerves talking. But everything is pretty much glued on, so we don't have to worry about any broken pieces. Yay! Also gives me good confidence as well that the transit or the um, trip back from Dallas because uh, it was all of my checked luggage and everything that, that it did not get damaged because I padded it up with some good clothes and stuff. So that is what I did there to transport everything back, and I do recommend doing that as well. So if you have, like, any, like, dirty clothes or used clothes, I'll say, um, from your trip, just try to pad that around the, your models that you're bringing back home so that you don't have it damaged in transit. But here she is. This is the American A319 with Sharklets by Gemini Jets. Now, again, you know, mold has its issues, but what can you do? You know, I spent money on this, so I won't sit here and complain about it. But starting off at the front, we got the cockpit windows, you have the L1 door, have the nose gear here, and then the American titles. Registration on this is November 9 or 3003. Now, I think this aircraft does have the logo winglets printed on the inside now. Um, this Gemini rendition does not capture that, unfortunately, but I think this was made before that happened, so, you know, what can you do? Um, but I'm sure somebody would customize this at some point to have the logo on the winglets. Had the internal registration code printed on this side of the wing again. I should check my other American models to see if they have that detail on there now. On the top, you got the various antennas there. Uh, three on the top. There is none on the bottom. Now, I did talk with Todd, um, who is essentially the PR guy for Gemini Jets, and he said that the reason why they don't really put antennas on the bottom is because they easily fall out. Now, this now this applies to all the their other antennas that they have on their models. So, you know, if you have an antenna that falls out, I don't think it's that big of an issue. So... You know, what are you really going to do about that kind of stuff? If you can find it, try to put it back on. But if you can't, you know, you'll just kind of have to roll with it. Uh, Wi-Fi dome on there as well. Forgot to mention that. But otherwise, I'd say this is a pretty good model from Gemini Jets, given the issues that this model may have, like the engines and all that good stuff. But for what it is, I think it's really good. So this will be a really good model for the collection. And as I was talking about the antennas, I noticed that the front antenna is actually loose. I can easily spin that around, so this may fall out at any point in time. And just like I was saying, you know, these antennas, they, they can fall off really easily. And, you know, it's a pain in the butt to try and put them on, and it's a pain in the butt to try and find them, and a pain in the butt to put them back in. These next two models come from the Texan Airplane Store. Again, another great store. Have their pen right here, like I said at the beginning of the video. Just using that as my pointer. We have the Gemini Jets 1 to 400 scale Southwest Boeing 737 MAX 8 in the Desert Gold Retro. Now, this has been a very controversial model. I will say that right off the bat because a lot of people were really looking and assessing at the color of both this and the NG release. And a lot of people have been saying that the NG release is better, but it's still not good because the NG still got the color wrong, but it is much closer. 
Now I would have bought an ENG, but by the time I got around to buying this, I didn't see any more, unfortunately, so I, I will have to settle for the Gemini release at this point, but you know, what, what are you gonna do about it? That's what I've said a lot already in this video. But this is your standard Southwest box, no flap, all white, and there you see the price there, standard retail price, basically. Um, I don't number on that there, GJSWA, uh, 2186, and it does have the 2023 copyright date. That's, that's pretty cool. Now, this has been compared, the, or at least the color specifically, I think it's been compared to, I am about to say that's about accurate or so. Very glittery, kind of like the 700 release, I would say. Yeah, so, you know, Gemini, I hate to say that, but they did not do really good on that color. So, you know, I would have gotten the NG, but like I said, I didn't find any by the time uh, I got around to buying this. So, yeah, so we'll just have to see how this goes and we'll try to make this work. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the Southwest 737 Max 8 Desert Gold Delivery by Gemini Jets. Yeah, so you can see some other issues as well with the engines. They do have a little bit of an upward tilt, you know, given the other issues, I would definitely not want to let that slide either. Uh, there is some wing flex on this, unfortunately, you see there. Uh, kind of point that up to the front, maybe just a little bit, but I don't know. I think there is supposed to be a little bit, but I feel like it's a little too much. So they put a little too much wing flex on that, so I think that's a bit unfortunate. Let's go ahead and take a look at this model in more detail. Starting off at the front, we have the cockpit windows. They have the Herbert D. Kelleher there. That's the official name, but people call it the uh, Desert Gold Retro. Uh, 871 E-tops on the nose gear. Then you have the L1 door leading up to the engines there, which match that like gold flaky color that Gemini used. And on the winglets, you do have the um, uh, Desert Gold colors, and Southwest.com is printed on them. Um, it won't focus on it, but that's basically what it is. Now, the Wi-Fi dome is painted in the same color. Gemini got that detail, so there's a, there's a plus for it. And on the tail there, you have Southwest with the American flag. November 871 Hotel Kilo is a registration, and the same stuff is on the nose gear just above the uh, L2 door. And then we'll pop this back up over here. You can see the overwing exits and then your antennas and all that good stuff. And also the red underbelly, which I think the red underbelly looks okay, but obviously that gold there, um, yeah, that's not that's not the best effort I've ever seen. So yeah, what can you do? Um, I'll just have to hold on to this. If I find the NG later on, maybe I'll get rid of this and just settle for that. But for right now, I'll hang on to the Gemini release. Now, for the Canyon Blue, I will probably get the Gemini because historically they have gotten the Canyon Blue colors accurate, and I know other manufacturers have had greater success with those colors as opposed to the Desert Gold. So that will be something to look out for later on. Our last model from the Texan Airplane Store, or at least for now, we do have another one later. Uh, we do have the Gemini Jets 1 to 400 scale Jet Blue Airbus A220 300. A model that's been highly requested by many collectors, and we finally have a release of it. Been super excited to get this 2023 release. I think this was in. Gosh, I want to say, I think it was either the April or May set. It was in one of those two sets, I remember. I, no, I think it was June. No, it wasn't June, because June was the um, Delta 764. You'll see that here in just a few minutes. Um, item number on that is GJJBU2182. And yeah, this is another one of the models I took out while I was at the hotel. And this is this actually looks really good. So good effort here by Gemini on this particular model. No QC faults or anything, at least from what I've seen so far. And here she is, the JetBlue Airbus E220-300 by Gemini Jets. Looking at a pretty good model here, so let's go ahead and get started. Got the copy windows up here and also the name of the aircraft in question. Dawning of a Blue Era, that is the name you're looking for here on November uh, 3044 Juliet. Got the fleet number right there and some other information printed on. You have the FlyFi stuff next to the L1 door. The big JetBlue titles printed on and you have JetBlue.com on the engines, which do have a bit of an upward tilt, but you know, the, a lot of these models have had issues with that lately, so I don't know what's going on with that. We do have some antennas up on the top. We got three of them actually, along with the Wi-Fi dome. November 3044 Juliet is a registration along with Airbus A220 300 printed underneath. And we have the beautiful hops tail printed on as well. Looks really good here. Maybe a little bright on the colors, but it's pretty good nonetheless. It's also on the uh, inside of the winglets as well. You can see it there. And then just the plain blue on the outside. Underneath, we do have the dark blue belly underneath. Very tiny Gemini Jets logo and Stanhole. But a very nice model here from Gemini. So great to have this in the collection. Let's continue. 
Up next, we have the Gemini Jet 1 to 400 scale Eastern Airlines Lockheed L188 Electra with the Golden Falcon livery. This is a model I've been looking forward to getting, and finally, I had an opportunity to get it here. So, bought this from the Buchair USA table, which is a pretty good eBay store, I've heard. I think they also have a um, like an online store, not a physical store, I was about to say that, but it's an online store that they have as well. This is released in January of 2023, got it for about $35, so pretty good deal on that. That's pretty close to retail, a little bit less, I would say say but overall a really good deal on that so take this beauty out very very nice we'll add to my electric collection i think that's like my eighth or ninth like goodness me i've grown that electric fleet so much i'm about to become the electric expert here pretty soon so still need to add some like a psa or a um, something like that so hopefully i come across that in the future and here she is, the Eastern l 1 a Electra with the Golden Falcon livery by Gemini Jets. Starting off at the front, you got some beautiful details there on the nose with the cockpit windows. You have the Eastern Falcon logo, the American flag, Fly Eastern's prop jet Electra there above the cheat line. November 5507 is the registration. A little printed detail just underneath that. I can't see what that says. I think that's the Lockheed Martin logo. I could be wrong on that. You have some red details there on the front of the engines, which looks really nice. I love the front profile on this Electra. Uh, Gemini molds, not necessarily as good as the Aero Classics, but this is pretty good, I would say, still, um, nonetheless. And here's the other side, not much to really talk about here. And then we have a polished underbelly underneath, so again, a bit of a fingerprint magnet. Got a beacon and some other details printed on the top there, and nothing much else to talk about. But a very nice model from Gemini Jet, and I look forward to adding this into my Electra collection. Up next, we have a super exciting model for the collection. This is the Gemini Jets 1 to 400 scale Delta Airlines Boeing 767 400 Ron Allen livery. There's been so much demand for another 764 and 1 to 400 scale. Sorry about that. And finally, Gemini has delivered for their 25th anniversary. So a very exciting new mold here from Gemini Jets, and I cannot wait to unbox this. 2023 release has to be expected. GJDAL 2151 is the item number on this release. My first 764 in the collection. Oh, I'm very excited about this, and take a look at this beauty. This is just amazing. I will point out that the right horizontal stabilizer, or the left side actually, the port side, it is loose, but it's gonna stay in there. It looks like it won't really need much support to stay in there, but I may take it out if it falls out, or not take it out if it falls out, but if it falls out, I'll just glue it back on. Doesn't look like it's gonna be much of a problem anyway, so very nice to see that from Gemini. And here she is, the Delta 767-400 in the Ron Allen livery. This is a very stunning model. Now, I will point out that this model isn't necessarily sitting down correctly, like the nose gear. It's not to the ground, and it's not really tail heavy either. I think it's just more like the main gear. I think it's a bit too tall, and the nose gear is too short. So that's what's causing that imbalance there uh, with the uh, placement of the aircraft. Well, we'll start off up here at the front with the floating nose. You got the cockpit windows and the uh, little Sky Team logo there with the L1 door, the Delta Airlines titles, along with the polished underbelly coming up here. As we go along the blue cheat line there, November 826 Mike Hotel is the registration of this aircraft, still flying with Delta. And then the beautiful Delta tail up on the top, along with an internal registration code there, the fleet number uh, up on the top of the tail, which I believe, I think Delta still does that today with their current livery. A little bit underneath, we've got a nice polished underbelly, as I mentioned, white engines on there, the Gemini Jets logo and all that good stuff, um, and all the other good details underneath. So a pretty good model coming from Gemini Jets. Has a few issues, but you know, what else can you really do? Because a 764, it's a very hard type to come by in one to 400 scales. So, you know, it's, e it's either this, or you try to find the Herpa or Dragon Wings releases, which are very hard to come by on places like eBay. So very nice model, I would say, from Gemini. Up next, we have another good retro FSD model to take a look at. This is the Gemini Jets 1 to 400 scale Western Airlines Boeing 727-200 in the Flying W livery. My first Flying W aircraft in the collection. Bought this from one of the Gemini Jets tables. They had a bunch of old stock from like 1998 to 2008. $59 on this, which is a little higher, but pretty good uh, deal nonetheless. 
Bit of a unique box on the back with the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. So this was released right around the time that this was being uh, designed. You can see there 2005 for the release date on this. So right around the time when the Dreamliner was uh, in that finalization phase of the uh, development stage and all that good stuff right before it took its first flight. So you can kind of see there the uh, concept art is pretty close to what we have today with the current 787 design. There's an image of the plane underneath there and all the Gemini Jet stuff, pretty good stuff here nonetheless. Item number on this is uh, GJWAL553. So super excited to have my first flying W aircraft in my collection. I cannot wait to use this in Retro FSD in the future to go along with the 732 and this is just stunning. Yes, love the effort here from 2005. And here she is, the Western 727-200 Flying W by Gemini Jets. Starting off at the front, we've got the black nose there and the cockpit windows. Have the L1 door and the beautiful Flying W logo there that stretches into that red sheet line. Small Western titles above the window line. Got the American flag and the registration, which is November uh, 2812 Whiskey. Boeing 727 on the engines and the Western tail there in the block titles. Very nice to see that. Flip it underneath here, we've got the standard Gemini Jets details, a bit of a silver paint there in the middle. Um, some other minor details printed on the wings. No antennas on this model, but this is from 2005, so they weren't really a thing back then. We do have a little beacon light printed on top. Cannot wait to use this in Retro FSD. Super excited about this. Let's continue on with our penultimate model for the unboxing. Our second to last model, this comes from the Texan Airplane Store, is the Gemini Jets 2 1 to 400 scale Delta Airlines Boeing 767 300 in the widget livery. A really good deal on this I got on the uh, discount day, which is Saturday, $54.95 for it, and with a discount, it was a little bit closer to $50. So a really good deal for something like this, which is very much sought after on eBay and other secondhand marketplaces. So on the back here, you've got your standard Gemini Jets box for the time, released in 2003. A very nice release right here. Item number on this is GJDAL454. Very excited to unbox this. I've not taken this model out of the box, by the way, so I cannot wait to see this in the flesh. Look at this beauty. Oh my god, look at that. Damn, this thing just is amazing. Now, if I can only get this uh, Spirit of Delta 762. God, I'm, my eyes are getting wet. <laughs> and here she is, the Delta 767-300 in the widget livery by Gemini Jets. Starting off at the front, we've got the cockpit windows there, the black nose, and then you have, looks like to be a Sky Team logo on this. That's very interesting. I don't think that's very common, at least on the widget aircraft, but this is likely a later iteration of this of recent airline alliances. didn't really come around until about 2000 or so, something like that. I don't know exactly when Sky Team was founded. Um, but you do have the Delta widget there right on the L1 door, the beautiful Delta billboard titles and that navy blue sheet line. Got the Delta logo printed on one of those engines there. The registration on this is November 140 Lima Lima. I don't think that's flying for Delta anymore. Boeing 767 there at the end of the cheat line and the beautiful Delta tail along with a fleet number there on the top of the tail. Again, no external details really with antennas and stuff, but you do have them printed on like a beacon and those two black dots up there. Over wing exits over there and then you have the Gemini Jets logo which has stayed relatively unchanged since about this time. The stand hole is a little bit different compared to what we have today. I think this might be compatible with something like the Dragon Wing stands. Let me try that because I have the um, Dragon Wing stand from that MD-88 uh, Delta widget that I unboxed earlier in the video. So let me see if that's compatible with that. So again, if you have never really put together one of these, all you really have to do is just kind of slap that in there, just like that, and there you go. And then let me see if that actually fits on there. I'd be amazed if it does, but... Um, oh yeah, it does. That is awesome. New element there, discovered right there. Fits on the Dragon Wing stand perfectly, but I do wonder if this may be and like an X Dragon Wings model or something, and Gemini just modified it a little bit. But yeah, a very, very nice model. This will complement my Ron Allen one really well. Now all I need is a Delta Flot. So I hope to God I can find one, or if Gemini does one, God forbid that happens. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But let's move on to our final model of the unboxing. 
And what a way to round out Massive Unboxing 15 with the Gemini 200 1 to 200 scale Eastern Metro Express de Havilland Twin Otter 6 200. My first Twin Otter in my collection and my second Gemini 200 model ever in my collection. Now, do you want to guess how much I got this for? Was it $70? $60? No, it was $49. I bought this on that discount day again, so just like the Delta 763 widget, I could not pass up an opportunity like that. $49 for a 1 to 200 model like this, that is a really good deal, and that's pretty close to a 1 to 400 wide body even, or even some of the narrow bodies these days. So now it is wrapped up in this like plastic bag. It is taped down under here, so we'll go ahead and just take that out like so. Um, I know some 1 to 200 like to have that, others don't, but it just kind of depends on what you have here. So this opens up just like so, it opens up with that flap, and you do have a free stand that comes with it, but again, I've heard that the Gemini 200 stands are not that good, so uh, make sure you get like a wood stand or something. And there is the model inside, look at that. Wow, that's actually a little bit bigger than I thought it would be. Very, very nice twin otter right here. This will go really well. Hopefully they do want a 1 to 400 scale, but man, that is tiny. Or 1 to 200. That's actually pretty impressive. And our final model for the unboxing, the Eastern Metro Express de Havilland Twin Otter by Gemini Jets. Starting off at the front, we do have the nose cone there and the cockpit windows. And Eastern Met Metro Express printed underneath the that blue cheat line there. November 9 or 3 0, Mike Alpha is a registration. And then you have the uh, hockey stick-ish cheat line that goes up there. Various passenger windows and other elements included. The props do spin on this model, which is awesome. And I don't think the landing gear rolls since it's just like the one wheel. Yeah, they don't roll, but I think they are like a rubber or like, yeah, it's like a rubber compound in there. And actually, the nose gear does roll, so you can see I'll kind of demonstrate it here just very slightly so I don't break it. They have some like, I would think these are like pitot tubes there just underneath the cockpit windows. That is a nice detail that Gemini added. And you have like two antennas there up on the top, which look really good. And the horizontal stabilizers there also look really awesome. The engines and everything. This is a very nice model. I'm very happy that I got the Twin Otter. I'll have to get that Trans Maldivian one that has the floats. So if I can find that again, I should have probably bought that at Airliners too, because I think I saw one or two that were there. I'll have to find that in the future. But yeah, that is everything for this unboxing. And that will do it for Massive Unboxing number 15. A number of good models coming over from the Airliners International 2023 convention in Dallas, Texas. Be sure to head out to the 2024 show over in Kansas City, June 26th through 29th. I'll have another video on that coming up here in the next week or so. Very excited about that convention, but I've been very happy with the haul that I got here. Well, not just the models, but also the memorabilia as well. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. I enjoyed making this too. So with that being said, that is the end of the video. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video.